All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, everyone that is in attendance. Um, tonight's budget hearing will consist of Mr. Rice uh, sharing the budget presentation. Following his presentation, we'll have an opportunity for uh, public comment. We'll uh, ask that we keep comments three to five minutes and um, state your name when you come to the podium. We'll do that at the conclusion of Mr. Rice's presentation. So this time we'll turn it over to Mr. Rice. Thank you, Dr. Noel. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Noel, and community members. It is my pleasure to present the 2019-2020 uh, budget. But first, I would like to thank all of the departments, the campus principals, their site-based teams, human resources, Dr. Hines and his team, Mr. Greg Colshan, Dr. Phillips, and the finance team for working on this budget. This budget process doesn't take just months. It takes over a year to put the budget together. So really appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this and I just wanted to say thank you to them for that. I like to start all my budget presentations with the financial highlights that we have achieved in the current year. Uh, the district continues uh, to get recognized from the state comptroller's office for our transparency presentations. We receive transparency stars for our traditional finances, debt obligations, and contract and procurement presentations. And you can find each of these presentations on the district's uh, website. The Texas Smart Schools is formerly known as the FAST Report. Um, this program was first started in the state comptroller's office, and it highlights success in two dimensions, both academic performance and cost-effective finances. Conroe ISD is one of only two districts out of the 11, over 1,100 in the state that have received five stars, which is the highest rating you can receive uh, for 10 consecutive years. Our 2017-2018 ERG ranking, <clears throat> ERG stands for Education Resource Group, and they perform an analysis of the 200 largest districts in the state. And the ranking is done on academic and financial performance. And we are ranked second in the state by their performance goals. Each year, we like to do our comparison to state averages by function. And looking at this, we spend $7,965 per student, which is about $916 per student less than the state spends. If we spent at the state average rate of $8,881 uh, per student, our budget would have to increase by an additional $57.6 million. We run a very efficient district. 63.75% of our budget goes into instruction compared to 57.69% for the state. We put our funding into the classroom. If we spent at the state average rate for instruction, that would mean $30 million less for instruction. We continue to spend less than half the state average for central administration. We run a very lean and efficient organization. And we also spend more than the state average on security and monitoring services. Now looking at the legislative update, at the start of the legislative session, the governor had basically three goals as it pertains to school finance. First was to provide property tax relief. Second was to put more money into the classroom. And third was to try and simplify the complicated school funding formula. Um, so out of the 86th legislative session, House Bill 3 came out and it was named the Texas Plan. That plan provided $5 billion in property tax relief, $4.5 billion for education reform, $2 billion for teacher pay, and $3.5 billion for recapture reduction. So this is just some of the highlights of House Bill 3, and I'm just going to identify a few of these today. Uh, it increased the basic allotment from $5,140 per ADA to $6,160 per ADA. And this is the basic mechanism that they used uh, to provide teacher raises and to also compress the tax rate. Another requirement is it requires districts to provide full day pre-kindergarten to eligible four-year-old students. Um, cost of this program alone, not including the additional classroom space needed, is estimated at $5 million. The next three items are very important as we start talking about our tax rate and our state funding. Uh, House Bill 3 moves to the use of current year property values for determining your state funding, and it provides uniform tax relief for the biennium a seven cent compression on the tier one M&O rate. So you'll see our proposed tax rate for M&O being at 97 cents. And we'll talk about that later. Also, it prohibits school districts from increasing M&O rates to create a surplus in your M&O budget to buy down your debt service tax rate. And we know we have done this in the past. We have used surplus uh, funding in our M&O budget to buy down our debt service tax rate. We're no longer allowed to do, 
to do this. It also has various new allotments, uh, some of the allotments uh, that were repealed. And, and, and one thing I want to point out is with the measures of House Bill 3, the state has essentially set our tax rate for us in this first year. <clears throat> now looking at our general fund balances, this chart represents the fund balance of the general fund over the past 11 years. In 2008, our fund balance was $76 million, and we're projecting in 2019 at $139.6 million. So we will start by taking a look at the major components that drive the budget, maybe with our 2019 2020 budget objectives. And they include to meet the needs for the 2019 2020 school year. Uh, we're opening Suchma Elementary and we're opening 11th grade at Grand Oaks High School. Uh, and we have to prepare for 1,350 new students coming in. Uh, we want to provide a competitive compensation plan. And as always, we place a high priority on safety and security at our campuses. And we want to protect the district's operational infrastructure by establishing a district-wide maintenance fund. Our attendance data. Our state revenue estimates and campus expenditure budget allocations rely on our enrollment data. For the upcoming 2019-2020 budget, we're using an enrollment increase of 1,350 students for a total enrollment of 64,187 and an ADA percentage of 94.0%. Uh, it is important to note that the expenditure budget has to be based on your enrollment. However, we're funded from the state based on our average daily attendance. This chart just graphically shows our, our growth over the uh, last 10 years. As you can see, it's pretty linear. 1,500 students a year are coming to CISD, so it, it is coming. Now talking about certified property values. Uh, property values increased by 6.56%. This growth will add about $2.34 billion to our overall property values, bringing our total to $38.1 billion. But what we'll see is with moving to House Bill 3 uh, and their use of current year property values, this increase will not provide us any additional funding in our maintenance and operation budget. And we'll show that as we look at our revenue estimates uh, in a little bit. This is our 2019-2020 uh, proposed tax rate. And I want to take us back a little bit to 2017, 2018, just to get a base for where we're beginning. In 2017, 2018, our adopted tax rate was $1.04 for maintenance and operation and 24 cents for debt service for a total tax rate of $1.28. Everybody remembers Hurricane Harvey. How can we forget that? At, at this time, uh, statute allowed us to access additional golden pennies within the state funding formula if we incre increased our M&O tax rate by two cents. We wanted to access those golden pennies, but we did not want it to affect our taxpayers. So we subsequently decreased our debt service tax rate for a net effect of zero to our taxpayers. Uh, so our tax rate ended up being $1.06 for maintenance and operations and 22 cents for debt service. Our total tax rate stayed the same at $1.28, but we knew that was only good for one year. We knew we would have to revert back to our 2017-2018 to our tax rate. So. Going back to old law, our maintenance and operation tax rate is $1.04. Our debt service tax rate of 24 cents has a total beginning tax rate at $1.28. Now we'll look at the effects that House Bill 3 uh, has on our tax rate. Um, as we just talked about a little bit earlier, House Bill 3 compresses our tax rate by seven cents. That uh, <coughs> shows us a 2019-2020 proposed rate for our maintenance and operations of 97 cents. On the debt service side, in previous years, as we discussed, we had, we had transferred at least $10 million a year to debt service to buy down that tax rate. We're no longer allowed to transfer those funds to debt service uh, based on House Bill 3. So that tax rate must be set at an amount to cover our debt expenditure for the year. That tax rate is 20, uh, 26 and a half cents. So our total debt service tax rate for 2019-2020 is $1.235. That is a four and a half cent tax decrease. So basically, I just want to uh, you know, say this again, House Bill 3 has really set our tax rate for us moving for, for this year. So what better way than to benchmark yourself against other districts? This is our Greater Houston Area tax rate comparison based on everybody else's proposed 2019-2020 tax rate. CISD will still be the second lowest tax rate 
in the greater Houston area. Our Montgomery County school districts are identified with the asterisks down at the bottom. Uh, Splendor and Channel View have not uh, come up with their proposed tax rates yet. And you will still see that New Caney ISD will have the highest tax rate by a long shot at $1.5684. <clears throat> The uh, school districts in the green column are our peer districts that we compare to both academically and financially. And this is our tax rate comparison uh, with those school districts. We are 14.7 14 cents below our peer average tax rate. And we're three and a half cents below the uh, closest district to us in tax rate, which is Fort Bend. So I think that's still in good standing compared to those districts. Now, just looking at our tax rate history, uh, this also includes our average peer tax rate. And you can see we're well below the average peer uh, tax rate. 2014-2015, our tax rate was $1.28. Uh, For those subsequent five years, our tax rate was all at $1.28. In 2019-2020, our proposed tax rate, once again, is $1.235, which is four and a half cent tax decrease. <laughs> so now we're gonna look at our 2019-2020 funding estimate. And with this estimate, we showed this, I showed this to the board at, at the last board workshop, but I just wanna go over it again. And this shows us how our increased uh, property value does not generate any new revenue for our maintenance and operation uh, fund. It, it does for our debt service, but not for maintenance and operation. So based off our estimated 5.5% AV growth, our tax revenue increase was $2.24 million. However, when certified values came in, that increase came in at 6.56% uh, AV growth. That revenue increase increased to $5.9 million. That was a $3.66 million increase. Now, if we look down at the state revenue line, with 1,350 student growth, and the effects of House Bill 3, our state revenue with a 5.5% AV growth was estimated at $45.11 million. However, with the 6.56% AV growth, our state revenue decreased by the exact amount of our tax revenue increase of $3.66 million to $41.45 million. So as you can see, we realized no additional funding with increased property values. You can also see we're increasing our investment income by a million dollars. And TRS in-kind funds, this is just an accounting entry that we must do uh, to book our TRS in-kind fund uh, accounting. So our total estimated available funding, 53.35 million, no matter if it's 5.5% AV growth or 6.56% AV growth. So now we'll take a look at the expenditure side of our budget. This is our 2019-2020 salary increase. It includes a 3.5% increase for our teachers, librarians, counselors, and nurses. Also includes a $500 adjustment for teachers with six plus years of experience. That total cost is $9.6 million. Pay grade AE levels one through three will receive a 3.5% raise. Pay grades AE levels four through 10 will receive a 3% raise. That's at a cost of $1.75 million. Administrative business will receive a 3% raise, that's 265,000. Administrative support, instructional support, auxiliary and police, that's all our non-exempt employees, will receive a 3.5% raise. Total cost of this raise, $14,046,000. This is our approved 2019-2020 teacher hiring schedule. It includes a beginning teacher salary of $55,500. Um, it's a 3.5% general pay increase, which on the midpoint is $2,000. And uh, you can see the $500 uh, adjustment for teachers with six years plus ex experience. Yes, sir. I may be jumping the gun by asking this question, but what was the amount of the raise, either in percentage, if we're given 35 or 2000 on the midpoint, what was the mandated amount from the state because of the increase? 2.5%. Two and a half percent. Two and a half percent. Yeah, Thank we're you. giving above that. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Just like to share the pay pay increase comparison with other districts where they where they fell with House Bill three and their increases, and you can see where Conroe ISD is. So personnel for growth. Um, this is positions for support at the campus level for thirteen hundred and fifty new students that are coming in. 
the opening of 11th grade at Grand Oaks High School, the opening of our new elementary school, Suchma. It includes 153 new positions that are made up of 107 teachers, 10 administrators, nine professionals, and 27 paraprofessionals. That's at a cost of about $9 million. Our support positions are to support our campuses. There's 56.4 uh, new positions. And this is mainly in our transportation, police, and maintenance and custodial departments. That cost is $1.9 million. Uh, total new positions is 209.4. Uh, total payroll additions, $10.98 million. So this is our projected expenditure budget increase for 2019-2020. It includes additional personnel for growth. We just talked about 10.98 million. Our salary increase is 14.05 million. Uh, our potential employee retention stipend is $5 million. That works out to about $625 uh, to all employees if we did a flat rate. Um, you can see the new programs required by House Bill 3, the increase for pre-K, CTE, bilingual, dyslexia, comp ed, school safety, and there's a whole numerous uh, more lines of programs that are out there. Uh, other expenses include utilities, insurance, fuel, and supplies, $1.81 million. The other side of our TRS in-kind funds of $5 million. That leaves us with total operating expenditures of 44.13. And then there, this is our transfer uh, for the uh, capital maintenance fund. If we remember, the board authorized the transfer uh, to start this at the last board meeting, and this is our continued five-year plan to remove those maintenance items out of the potential bond referendum. And that leaves us with total expenditures of $54.13 million. This is our 2019-2020 projected budget. On the revenue side, our beginning revenue was $502.27 million. We have 53.35 million worth of new revenues, giving us a projected 1920 revenue budget of 555.62 million. On the expenditure side, our 1819 expenditure budget was 495.45 million. We have 54.13 million uh, worth of new expenditures for a projected expenditure budget of 549.58 million, leaving us with an estimated budget surplus of a little over $6 million. So what's our proposal for that budget surplus that we have? We, we need to remember that this is a, you know, the, the state budget's on a biennium. It's a two-year budget. So we need to retain those funds to help us with our 2020-2021 budget. And I'll show you the pro forma in just a minute that, that is showing currently a deficit on that. So we want to save the surplus in the general fund balance to support the 2020-2021 budget. That year we will be opening a new junior high school. Uh, and then if any funds are remaining, we want to utilize the surplus to support capital maintenance fund and then cover any other unforeseen expenditures. This pie chart shows the budget broken down by major object. It includes our payroll budget, which is 87.6% of our budget. Uh, contracted services is 5% of our budget. The largest item we have in there is our utility bill. Supplies and materials make up 4.2% of our budget. The largest item we have in there is fuel for our buses. Uh, equipment and other uh, equates to 1.4% of our budget. The largest item in there is our property insurance. And then you can see the creation of our capital maintenance fund is about 1.8% of our budget. So our total 2019-2020 proposed budget is $549,580,294. Uh, this is our fund balance analysis, and our objective is to maintain an unassigned fund balance of 25% of our annual budget, which is approximately three months' worth of expenses. Our 2019-2020 preliminary budget is $549.6 million. Uh, just want to give you a range here, as we discussed last time. 20% of the budget is $109.9 million. 25% of the budget is $137.4 million. Our estimated unassigned fund balance at 831.19 is $134.1 million which is 24.4% of the budget. Uh, that leaves us about $3.2 million short of our 25% target, but it does, uh, at the 20% target, leave us with about $24.2 million that the board could use to, to move towards a potential bond referendum. So this is the pro forma I talked about. Um, <coughs> just quickly, beginning revenue, $555.62 million. Total revenue increase, based on the effects of House Bill 3, 
of 9.4 million, uh, estimated total revenue of 565.02 million. On the expenditure side, our beginning expenditures 549.58 million. Uh, estimated expenditure increase right at $22 million for estimated total expenditures of $571.58 million, leaving us with a potential deficit of $6.56 million. So what's next with the budget? Um, we will have another public hearing at the August 20th uh, board meeting. At that time, at that board meeting, we'll bring, we will bring the budget and the tax rate to the board for their adoption, for requesting their adoption. I do have a little bit of additional information uh, would like to share. Uh, we do have in this packet the top 10 expenditures from 2017, 2018. Uh, <clears throat> I'm showing this chart just because we have to, now that we've moved to current year values with House Bill 3, but for the first report, they haven't updated their reporting based on House Bill 3. So I still have to show y'all the effects of the one year lag. So I'm showing it and I want it recorded so that, so that when they check, we did talk about it. So we talked about that. Uh, do show one cent tax increase on a $300,000 home is uh, $27.50. And then we do have some reference documents, our finance manual, our transparency page, detailed budget board, uh, board organization and, and other items out there for your perusal. That's all, I have. all right. Thank you, Mr. Rice. At this time, we will open it up for public comment. If you would like to make a comment, once again, if you would keep your comments in three to five minutes, if you could come to the podium here in the middle, if you would just state your name um, before you make your comments. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Randy Lewis Smith. I'm up here today because I'm overpraised, I'm overtaxed, and I'm over here. Y'all didn't say anything about the poor little girl that got raped in, in the Woodlands High School. How much will that cost the district? Another million dollars like it cost a million dollars to Oak Ridge High School? Y'all remember that? When that school police officer took that little girl in the room and her parents got a million dollars out of that? Do y'all remember that? Now, this little girl that got raped at Woodlands High School, it was on television. And that basketball coach or whatever type of coach you call him, I call him pervert, he said it was good. But I knew it was wrong. What I'm saying is, we're, we're paying high, high taxes. And you people are responsible for protecting these children. These children's protection is, is more than anything. And then, Dr. Nub, my mother used to work at the cafeteria, Connell High School. And also, I got a lot of friends that work there. Have you ever had a free lunch at the cafeteria? Tell me the truth. Never have you had a free lunch ever at the cafeteria. Well, I appreciate that information, okay? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm hoping y'all figure out a way to cut this budget to help the poor taxpayers who are oppressed. I'm, I took off time from work today to come up here to let y'all know that we are definitely oppressed and, and we're trying to make it, trying to pay it. And I'm fighting with the appraisal district right now about the situation and uh, I'm hoping that y'all can figure out a way to cut the budget. But more than that, protect these children. They need protection. Little girl, uh, 19, 81, 82, was raped and murdered at Conroe High School. And they got they charged the man with it, but they never convicted him. Probably to the other two, there was no two more custodians involved in it. I called the DA and asked them to look into it deeper, but they didn't. Her name is Cheryl D. Ferguson, and she was raped and murdered there at Carmel High School. That's one. Then we had the little girl at Woodlands High School. Then we got the little girl at Overridge High School. That's just three that we know about. Get these perverts fired. Get rid of them. If you find out they're perverts, get rid of them off, get them off campus. Y'all had one. He was assistant principal. And he uh, got a job in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Steve Paulson. And I think he may have gotten himself in some difficulty too. I didn't ever find out the full details on it. But look out for these perverts that are messing with the little children. Please do that for me. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Smith. You. <clears throat> 
Hi, my name is Eric Yalik. I live in the Woodlands, right across the street from the Woodlands ninth grade campus. Um, there are a few things that I find really bothersome about the proposed budget and also about the process that it seems as though the district is following. First of all, the one thing that Mr. Rice failed to mention in his budget presentation, which is important, I think, to all of the taxpayers in your jurisdiction, is that you actually are increasing the effective rate of uh, your budget, the effective tax rate. So taxes are actually going up. So in the face of House Bill 3, which is supposed to be a statewide property tax reform, you are actually causing our taxes to go up. The reason our taxes are going up is because what you're doing is, is you're basically decompressing the debt service rate. And the way that you're doing that is you're not setting aside the $17.8 million that you set aside last year to pay down the debt service. Now, I heard what Mr. Rice said. I've had a long talk with Tammy McRae. I've looked very closely at House Bill 3 myself. I actually was there in the House when uh, Representative Huberty explained the details of the bill. There is absolutely nothing that would prevent this school district from taking funds to pay down that debt service rate. All you need to do is you need to look in your CAFR and see where your fund balance came from. And if you do that, you'll be able to pay down the debt service and do exactly what House Bill 3 promised to the citizens both of Conroe ISD and all of Texas. So I hope that this school board will take a very serious and hard look at your tax rate and what you are doing to the taxpayers of Montgomery County. The only other thing I want to mention is this. I've talked to several board members. I appreciate Dr. Null uh, talking to me, Mr. Rice. Uh, several of the board members have been very open and I appreciate you talking to me about these issues. But I am very concerned that this school board is taking a proposal that you're given by the administration. Now I've seen the same proposal three times given to this board. The numbers seem to be fairly, fairly similar from one presentation to the next. And while you ask questions, there's no real deliberation over the actual budget. And I look and see what your upcoming meetings are, and quite honestly, I don't really see anything other than just citizen comments and ex acceptance of PowerPoint presentations. I think that this school district needs to sit down and take a hard look at how, for example, our county government uh, goes through the budget line by line. That's the actual members of the commissioner's court, the elected officials like the seven of you, and take a hard look at every single department and ask the question whether or not that department is spending more money than it needs in order to accomplish its mission. Obviously, instruction is the very top priority. But I hope that you'll do that rather than taking basically a one-page budget that's presented to you by the administration and accepting it. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your courtesy and listening to me. Thank you, sir. All right, my name is Mark Frank. Uh, I do believe out of everything, the Republican Party has been very avid about our need for tax reform. Our state officials decided to take it upon themselves to deliver on that exact thing to all of the voters. Now, I, I have pretty simple questions. Has anybody here talked about a tax rollback yet? Has that even been brought up between any of you gentlemen to actually deliver on a promise to us? that it's not gonna just be taking money out of our pockets like Mr. Randy decided to speak about. At any point in time, did anybody actually decide that maybe redistricting would be appropriate? Because I've talked to over 100 teachers. Most of them are actually out in T buildings. They're very concerned for their safety. I understand that some of their concerns are not needed. We're not half as crazy as some other places. So I don't feel that it's always necessary to be so concerned, but they do make an excellent point 
but it's very disruptive to have to continue to get somebody to unlock the doors just so a child can use the restroom because the doors are locked for safety measures. And thirdly, I'd like to say, Dale Inman, thank you, sir. You actually listen to your constituents. You listen to the people. I would like this entire board to adopt Mr. Dale Inman's amendment that he proposed from the original bond. Make it Proposition A. Those are the needs that need to be addressed immediately and feel free to put every want in your little heart and your little dream on Proposition B. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful one, guys. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Boucher. I live in Precinct 3 in the city of Oak Ridge North. I'd like to preface my remarks by just telling you guys, um, you know, my mom was a teacher for 30 years. <clears throat> my brother is a school administrator, about to retire. My wife's a certified teacher, teaches deaf students all over the region. Um, so I, I'm very much in teacher's corner, and teachers in Texas deserve a pay raise. And that raise was finally on the way with HB3. Um, when that was passed in the 86th legislature. But it will cost Texans an estimated $11.6 billion. And to address that financial need here in Montgomery County, it seems like the strategy is to rely on our escalating home appraisals as a tax multiplier and then issue another mega million dollar bond. It seems like the plan. Um, you know, for me, teachers are, are there to teach and, and students are there to learn, that's it. You know, and as I look at these new schools, I can't help but realize that we've sort of succumbed to this notion that schools should compete with each other in terms of amenities, and every new school I see built is more opulent than the last one. Now, if these were private schools, I wouldn't have a problem with it because I think people should spend their hard-earned money as they choose, but we're talking about public schools, which are built with taxpayer money and funded through these massive bonds. So... May I suggest that when considering this budget process, we, we put more of an emphasis on a no frills approach. Just a building for the purpose of higher education. Let's fill these schools with teachers who have a passion for teaching, students who are there to learn. Let's support the teachers by dealing with disruptive students in such a way that they don't hamstring the teacher's efforts to teach or the other students' opportunity to learn. If you wanna spend money on something, I suggest we start there instead of AstroTurf and Airsoft gun ranges. Now, we can talk about the percentages and all that stuff, but when you go to the store to buy something, you can't spend a percent. <clears throat> At the end of the day, when we get our tax bill and we're paying more money, it doesn't matter how many times you guys tell us you cut our taxes. If we're paying more money, it's more money. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? My name is Ellis Cussey. A number of years ago, about a decade ago, I was asked to come and try to get the uh, comprehensive annual budget report from this school district. And uh, because there are programs that can uh, search active text that are now available. And of course, this was 10 years ago. And the runaround that I got, now most of you people weren't here. The woman that was in charge over there, she's retired. I don't blame her either. But I got a runaround it was very disingenuous and uh, I don't appreciate it. Now I will say this, I may have been the first person to get this from the outside, I'm not sure, but I did obtain a comprehensive annual budget report from this school district. It took me a while to get it. I kept coming back until I finally got it. Now year after year, I would come here in October after October the 1st, I would try to get this for $15. This evidently is a state law that says $15, you get this report. <clears throat> and they put it on a disc. I will say this, when I got the real one, 
when it paginated. By the way, they wanted me to spend about $3,000 to get it printed out. At first, they gave me a $25 overview from Deloitte and Touche from Houston and called that the CAFR. Then I went back and then they said they at three, whatever, 10 cents a sheet, whatever, it would be $3,000 to get it printed out. I mentioned that this should be available to anyone, and I believe there's a state law, $15. And so they gave it to me on this disc. This thing was kind of compressed, and when it paginated, if you printed this out, it would go to an eight-foot ceiling, much greater than the $3,000. Now, <clears throat> I've been coming back here, and I, I quit doing it because they won't give me the comprehensive annual budget report. They'll give me a disc for $15, and I bring the disc back, and I tell them, just across the hall right here, and this is it. I said, it's, it's not here. I know what a comprehensive annual budget report looks like in volume, and this ain't it. And so it, no matter how many times I come back, and so I just, the last couple of years, I just, I just quit. And so uh, somebody suggested Freedom of Information, you know, act. But um, like I said, I just give up. Uh, they, people need to go through this in all the school districts and see what's really happening here. And so... Uh, I just think that it would be, now there's some problems with handing out CAFRs to everyone in active text, I understand that, for y'all, not y'all, but the actual district that y'all are here for. <clears throat> but still, uh, the real one rests with y'all. And so uh, it was not something that I did on my own, I was asked to do it, so that's, I came down and that's all I got to say. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing no movement. Can I just follow up with one hand hitch on this? Is there a way we can just get that put on under transparency? It is. It is. It's there. Okay. Yes, sir. It is. Been for years. Anybody can access for it. For years. Dr. Noble. Yeah. Thank, thank Thank you. At this time, that will conclude our hearing. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Have a good evening.